All right. Um, it's 630, so we'll get started. Welcome to the Murray City Municipal Council meeting for Tuesday, June 7th. If you've got cell phones, we'd appreciate it if you put them on silent. Um, first time on the agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. I don't see any scouts, so I've asked uh, Chief Burnett if he would lead us in the pledge. Please rise. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. Okay, next item's approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes. We could take them separately or together. Uh, they are for the council meetings of May 17th and May 24th of 2016. Any changes, any adjustments, corrections? I, I do have one for the, uh, the 17th on page 20, uh, where it says, like Mr. Brass, Mr. Camp is struggling with eliminating the residential requirement. That is very possibly what I said. If it is, it's not what I meant, <laughs> because we were talking about eliminating the uh, commercial requirement, not the residential, so I'd like that changed. Yeah. I agree. Any, any others from anyone? If not, I would entertain a motion. I'll move approval of uh, the minutes. Both sets? Of, uh, for both meetings. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Uh, we have no special recognitions scheduled. This brings us to citizen comments. This is where... You can come up and speak to the city council for three minutes. We ask that you limit it to three minutes. We do have public hearings scheduled for uh, the budget. If you want to speak to the budget, then we'd ask you to speak at the, at the public hearing. But for now, we'll open it for citizen comment. Anyone interested? Yes. My name is uh, Darlene, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Darlene Morgan. I am a Murray citizen. <clears throat> I live at 228 East Vine Street. I came to your council meeting about two months ago in April and introduced to you a man by the name of Jerry Knight. He is the manager of City, Sandy City, Sandy Suburban Improvement District, um, the sewer district, and um, their city has been successful in implementing a program uh, that has worked for citizens as well as the city in um, replacing and maintaining the lateral lines, which are the lines that connect from their home to the sewer, so to the main sewer line. And uh, I know this has been a, a problem uh, for a lot of people, and so uh, I brought it up to you last time. I've uh, informed many of the Murray citizens a little bit about what's going on. Some of those citizens are here tonight who are interested in finding out a little bit more about this situation. I have prepared for you um, the topic of what we'd like to talk about tonight, uh, and there are some papers over here to your left uh, that talks about the letter that Sandy City Suburban District Improvement District sent to their citizens, uh, the words of a lady that I've invited here tonight, Renee Christensen, which will speak to us in just a moment, and also House Bill 34 that was passed by our legislature inform informing all municipal municipalities that they must inform their citizens that the responsibility to maintain and replace their letter of line again the line connecting from their home to the street uh, is their responsibility the cost to replace this line is between twelve and fifteen thousand uh, dollars this um, could cost some uh, more citizens to be interested in what's going on here and my purpose tonight is to uh, see if we can't get Murray City to be a little more proactive in uh, looking and researching and looking what would work for the citizens of Murray City as well as the city. I've invited Renee Christensen here tonight to update us a little bit on what's going on in Sandy City Suburban Improvement District. Uh, she is a three-time elected uh, trustee 
and uh, has, is very much where the program that uh, Sandy City has, has been involved in. Um, I thank you for allowing her to give us a little bit of an update on this and telling us a little bit more about House Bill 34. And I would ask that the council members give her five minutes rather than three. Thank you. And anybody have an issue with five minutes? I really think I only take about four and a half. <laughs> All right. The general manager from Sandy Suburban, Mr. Jerry Knight, has previously spoken on the subject of our lateral insurance program to the council. The dynamic has changed somewhat since his visit. There's now a new piece of legislation which was recently enacted known as Senate Bill 34, Sewer Lateral Disclosures. The new law requires all providers of public sewer systems to yearly notify homeowners that they are responsible for sewer lateral repairs. I've attached a copy in the packet of information that I've given to your um, clerk there who will give it to you. The current legislation directive reminds me of a scene from a 1980s animated movie called The Secret of Nim. Mrs. Brisby goes to the council for help with a house issue. The discussion ends when one in the council rises and says, we have problems of our own. Let the lower creatures deal, fend for themselves. So Senate Bill 34 just announces that the lower creatures, the property owners, must solve their own problems on that day when their basement drain begins oozing matter into their home. You, as the council of the city, have the power to do something more than post a conspicuous notice. You just have to have the courage to think outside the box and to be proactive to bring solutions to the citizens of Murray City. This body has done so countless times before. Murray City's legacy has always been that of protecting the lower creatures, the citizens of its community. The beacons to that philosophy are all around us. Murray Park, Murray Schools, Murray Power, Murray Water. Murray created the concept of Auto Row decades before its time, as well as the recent concept of full campus health care. Why stop now? Why continue the negative oppressive practices of others when there is an opportunity to move ahead with vision and confidence? A lateral insurance program not only protects the citizens, but it protects the city as a whole in several ways. The city's infrastructure is not only under attack by age and by tree roots, but also by unscrupulous vendors with shoddy workmanship and outrageous pricing. In Sandy Suburban's first year of the program, we have had in excess of 150 claims. The repairs were done by authorized companies who maintained our infrastructure standards. The average cost brokered through our insurance providers came in at nearly 45% below what the homeowner or could have secured independently. Our average repair cost was $4,800. On the open market, those repairs would have ranged from $8,000 to $15,000. We at Sandy Suburban have saved our constituency nearly half a million dollars in just one year. Where can you get those benefits in today's economy? From that perspective, the nominal monthly fee paid by every single unit is insignificant. The beauty of an insurance pool is that it can take many shapes, straight premiums, low or high deductibles, or a little of both, over the base of single family unit homes within the city. Each agency decides how the insurance vehicle is constructed, who the operators will be, and which benefits are provided. Those are the decisions that the city will make. Outside of the box, protections for lateral issues is a reality. With a little education, your citizens will easily come to see the value that Murray City Fathers are providing through an innovative and unique program that secures lateral insurance. I recommend that the council learn enough to grasp the vision of what is possible rather than simply accepting the proclamation of the legislature that each homeowner must continue to fend for themselves. So it's not only a matter of if, but when the matter starts oozing up in your basement, it will be too late. And as a lower creature, what will you do then for yourselves? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Would anyone else care to address the council on citizen comments? 
Okay, we will take that under advisement. Thank you. Okay. Next item, we don't have a consent agenda. And we have several public hearings. The first one is consider an ordinance amending the city's fiscal budget year 2015-2016. Justin, you're gonna be busy tonight. Justin Zollinger is serving as the mayor pro tem. Um, well, our mayor is out of town or? Not feeling well. Not feeling well, okay. I've been out of town, so I just got back in myself. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate coming before the council tonight with the, our final budget opening of the fiscal year 2016. Um, we needed to add a few things to our budget as we've been awarded some money and as we have found out that we'd like to pay off some of our other bonds as well that we have outstanding right now. Um, we received a TRCC funding for our amphitheater. Um, the county has awarded that to us of over $1.2 million for our, our amphitheater. The first amount, the, six, the 636927 will be paid this fiscal year, and, or this calendar year, which is their budget year, and then next year, the other 636000 will be paid. But the amphitheater project will start with this money right here that they're paying us. So we can start doing the drawings, uh, construction doc, draw, documents right now. So by putting that in the budget right now, that makes it so Doug, Doug Hill, Director Hill can have that started right now and we will be able to start construction, hopefully in September for our amphitheater upgrades, which is great. Um, we have made the decision we'd like to pay off a portion of our 2009A sales tax revenue bonds in the amount of nine, or approximate amount of 980,000. That's an approximate number, not an exact number. It will be enough, but it's not like to the penny. It's, it's to the hundreds of dollars, not, not to the penny. Um, but that, that money will be paid from the redevelopment agency and will be paid from the RDA's reserves. Our library fund received a grant of $500 from the Utah Library, State Library Division for young adult literature. And so we'd like to get that in their, in their budget. In addition, from the same division, Utah State Library Division, they also awarded $500 for multicultural literacy activities as well in the library fund. And then last, our fire department, police department received uh, state homeland security money of $3,552. And this will be added to the general fund in those uh, different divisions. So any que questions on these items we have for our last budget opening this year? Questions for Justin? Justin, what was the amount for the fire department? It's $3,552. Thank you. Any others? Thank you. Okay. All right, this is a public hearing. I'll open it up for public comment now. Again, um, we ask that if you'd like to speak, limit your comments to three minutes. Please approach the podium. Give us your name and address, and we need you to fill out a form. You don't have to fill it out before you speak, but please fill one out. Make sure that Jan Lopez over here gets them. Would anyone speak like to speak to this item? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion and open it up for council consideration. I'll move that we uh, approve an ordinance amending the city's fiscal year 2015-2016 budget, presented by Justin Zollinger. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Jennifer. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 All right, moving on, second public hearing is to consider a resolution approving assistance to nonprofit entities pursuant to section 10-8-2 of the Utah Code for fiscal year 2016-2017. Okay, me again. Um, historically, as a city, we have had this included in our budget document and for our budget, uh, public hearings for our budget. We felt like it was probably better, even better disclosure to have it all by itself and disclose that uh, these are the entities that we are providing funding for in a non-exchange type transaction, meaning we're providing this funding not with expectations of receiving anything in return, but to 
for example, one of the items on here was for the Boys and Girls Club, to help the Boys and Girls Club operate. Um, the things on our addendum range from a farmer's market to uh, the homeless services that we provide money for the homeless shelter, um, the council of government that we participate with, like I said, the Boys and Girls Club, Miss Murray Award that we provide for the pageant winner, the youth chamber, uh, and some money for the Murray City, uh, Murray School District. So various things. Uh, if I didn't know, I, I wasn't sure if, where well, this is the first time we've ever done this in, in, in this form, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to go through the line items detail or if we just want to disclose this item and, and call it. No, I think this will be fine. Okay? I mean, it's open to, for public inspection. Correct. It, should, it's, it will be online after we adopt the budget. And it, it is in our budget document. It's we, in the budget we, document. We put in the budget so document, online now. which is online now. Okay. But, uh, but, yeah, so we're, we're trying to do some good things with uh, who we provide money to and care for taxpayer dollars. And should you not know, Murray's website is murray.utah.gov, so you can find all of that online. All right. Anything else? That, that's it. Questions for Justin on this? Thanks, Justin. Yep. Okay, again, we'll open this up for public comment. And same rules apply. Would anybody care to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and open it up for council consideration. I'll make the motion to adopt the resolution approving assistance to nonprofit entities pursuant to section 10-8-2 of the Utah Code for fiscal year 2016-2017. Second that. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Turner and a second by Mr. Nick Ponsky. Jennifer. Ms. Turner. Aye. Mr. Helms. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 And now the big one. Uh, this will be a, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance adopting the final 2016-2017 fiscal year budgets for Murray City, including the library fund budget. Again, Justin will be presenting. Now on this one, correct me if I'm wrong, we will take public comments tonight, but we will vote on the, the final budget at the next council meeting. So, okay, Justin. Um. Our budget, I like to add, so our citizens know, is always online. We strive to have it on there so you can go and look at every line item. Um, we start out with a budget, budget and brief summary, which outlines many of our, our, our bigger items that we're trying to cover and trying to communicate that we're trying to take care of with our, for our citizens. So the budget and brief covers that. We've covered that it includes a budget addendum. In addition, as you go through the budget, each department has a budget summary provided. So if you were to go through and read the budget in brief, in addition to the budget summaries that different departments provide, you probably have 95% of everything that's going on in our budget document. So there's a great place to start as you're looking at our budget document. In addition, so the summary shows you the changes from year over year, but then if you wanna go into the next level detail, you can go line item by line item and see how things have changed. We added one more uh, ratio this year, uh, percentage change line items, so you can quickly go and see where changes have occurred. So trying to, trying to provide full uh, disclosure. We've balanced our budgets. We worked very hard, council, mayor, all of our departments have worked very hard to, to balance the budget. That is, that is the standard. We expect that, we are going to do that. And I just appreciate everyone's uh, helping getting that done because it wasn't just any one of us doing that it was all of us doing that so uh, appreciate the any, if you have any questions I'm happy to go over them but uh, the budget is uh, it's in good it's in a good place okay anybody have any questions for Justin on this just a comment we really appreciate the work that you've done and um, if we don't know this budget by now, there's a real problem because you have gone over and over, and I really appreciate the patience that you've had with us. So thank you. Don't shake your head no yet because he's always, we can't compliment Justin ever, ever. It's just not allowed, but we're doing it anyway. It was great. I mean, really, it was one of the best budget, if you can say great about a budget. It was a good opportunity for us, and, and it was really 
it's a it's a great year. We're really covering a lot. We've been years. very blessed. So, yep. for, for and sure. thank you to your staff as well. They are Big awesome. Time. Yeah. Yeah, it is it is a lengthy process. Um, one thing that that we'll point out it was mentioned in the committee the whole meeting for those who weren't there the power department is debt free as of what june 1st june 1st um, which is huge we completely rebuilt the transmission system around the city um, early on right shortly after i was elected and we have paid off those bonds early um, to the tune of a 1.6 million that's the interest, interest, savings. interest savings yeah. Yeah. so it is a good budget and we we try to we try to spend it wisely, so. That's when Thanks, it really, you really realize what you've done, because as you're building your budget, you, you build that you're, you're saving, or, or you're, you're budgeting for your debt service. And this year, when you go to budget for your debt service, and there's two goose eggs <laughs> for principal and interest, because we've already paid it off, you realize, well, it's kind of like when you, if a person pays off their house, they don't realize that they paid off their house till the next month when you don't have to pay that payment. <laughs> and we didn't have to budget for that 1.6 to 1.8 payment that we have had every year. So it, that's when I, I just love what, what, what I do right there. That's yeah. so enjoyable. Justin paid the debt off at 1201. He couldn't pay it off till June 1st, but he <laughs> paid it at 1201. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, we will open this up for public comment. Again, uh, same rules apply, feel free to Step up and comment. Yes, sir. Just had a quick question. Is, uh, name, name and is address. Lloyd Jones. Thank and you. And I'm at 5151 South 600 East. Mm -hmm. uh, is a public comment also available uh, just as they're presenting it for approval? Uh, I understand it, that the final budget approval will be next council meeting. Is that That's correct? correct. And will there also be a public? Yes. Uh, yeah, we can we can we can continue time. the public hearing public to that the to the next hearing. date. Yes, so we won't we will not close the public hearing. We'll just continue it to next. Okay, next time. That's all I have was just a question okay. on whether there was open public yep. comment or if this was the the end of public comment on the on the budget. No, nope. thanks. You bet. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, then I will close. No, I won't. I will continue <laughs> the public hearing until the next meeting. Uh, is there any any other questions or comments from the council on this? Do we need a motion to continue? Yes, we do. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that we uh, postpone action on this uh, uh, ordinance adopting the final 2016-2017 fiscal year budget to our next meeting, which will be June 21st, 2016. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Camp, second by Mr. Hales. Jennifer. Aye. 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 We have no unfinished business, no new business. Um, report of the mayor. This is your chance to seize power. <laughs> I, I just wanted to mention the congratulate the power department on paying and becoming debt free. But uh, Jim beat me to that. And I'm sorry. I, it's OK. That, that was really the only thing I was really wanting to share. So um, I, I just hope Mayor Iyer's doing OK. And I'm happy to try to step in fill in for him okay any questions for justin then uh that's it for our agenda we're adjourned thank you all